Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us back at Global Crossing Airlines channel. We're sitting here once again with Ed. In the previous video, we dove deep into his intro, talked about his background a little bit. Today, we want to go deeper into the company itself. But first off, Ed, how are you doing today? Doing great, Michael. It's great to talk with you again and and uh, and, and talk to our listeners. Well, I appreciate uh, the audience. Wonderful, wonderful. So I feel like a good way to start this out is give us the basic elevator pitch of the company. Imagine we have 50 floors to go up and I look at you and I say, Ed, tell me about the company. What you got for me? Sure. So we're we're a we're a charter airline, which is different from a scheduled airline in in a number of ways. So, so we, we operate airplanes. We operate them safely. We operate under the same regulations and laws, uh, and FAA uh, uh, guidelines uh, that uh, a regular scheduled airline operates under. Mm -hmm. The main difference is is that uh, we fly uh, whole airplanes for clients. In other words, we sell. The whole airplane to a client um, and they are the ones who will sell the individual seats okay. uh, so we we have two different ways that we charter our airplanes one is a full charter where uh, a group will come to us and needs the, the airplane they're not an airline uh, so they come to us and say okay we need the airplane to fly from a to b we give them the price we we sign the contract and then uh, we pay for everything and then they basically pay for that plus our profit the other way is when we, we fly for certain airlines or a, other aviation companies, we fly what's called ACMI. So we provide the aircraft, the crew, our maintenance and insurance, uh, and they provide everything else, ground handling, uh, fuel, um, uh, check-in, loading, and all of that. Uh, and so that's a much, much a different price point, but it's uh, we can do that with airlines who have the capability of, of getting their own contracts uh, for their own services. So those uh, th those are the the, the the basic ways that we fly, which is different than a scheduled airline that obviously sells seats one at a time uh, to people. Hope they fill it up and then and then they fly. We sell the the whole whole airplane uh, as a charter to a single client, uh, and so we mitigate our risk. We if we if we don't get a contract, we don't fly, um, and uh, we have one point of contact, one one uh, uh, one customer that we work with. On, on any particular charter. Uh, we, we also will do cargo. So we will, uh, we're acquiring uh, A321 Airbus freighters uh, that will be converted to from a passenger airplane to cargo for us. And we'll start flying those early in 2022. So we have both passenger and cargo capability. Uh, we, 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 we're in a niche uh, end of the business. Uh, we very much mitigate our risk. We fly for others. We fly for other companies uh, in the in the aviation sector, and so to a certain extent, we're insulated from a lot of the issues that scheduled airlines have. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, and um, that you're right. That's not something a lot of people are super familiar with. So it's interesting to see the behind the scenes and kind of get to know your guys' side of the business. But can you tell people what's the most important thing when it comes to running like a new entrant in a growing airline? Oh yeah, there's there's so many there's so many things. Uh, being new, of course. Um, you know, we're building our team. So people, people are the most important thing uh, for us, uh, the people who work with us on our, uh, you know, in our, in our various teams. Corporate culture is very important. In a new airline, a new entrant like us, we have to have people who are willing to uh, go beyond what they do in their own particular area and be prepared to be involved in other areas of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to, you know, they need to be willing to work very long hours, uh, and they need to be willing to pitch in uh, in various different things, not only in their department but also in other departments where we need, we need some, you know, we need an extra pair of hands. And in a startup, you always you're always in need of that. So, people and culture, uh, most important things are values, how we approach our customers, how we uh, work with our team members, how we how we treat them. All of that's very, very important in an environment where everybody's working long hours and probably for less pay than they would be able to get, say, at another uh, more established airline. Uh, cost, of course, is important, and we watch every, every penny. That's not to say that other airlines don't do that, but when you're established and you've got a good base of business, a good book of business, and the revenues are flowing, um, it's a little easier to perhaps pay a little more or to, uh, you know, have more supplies on the shelf, those sorts of things. We watch every penny as every startup does. 
uh, and that just all goes along with the entire culture uh, where uh, all of our employees are, are uh, shareholders and we reinforce with them every day that you know we don't we don't spend money that we don't need to spend because we want to see it that appear in, in the stock price. Yeah, that makes sense. You have to have diligence in situations like this. It makes a lot of sense. And going back to what you said about the, the corporate world and everything, it's yeah. important to have people who are flexible, hardworking, but most importantly, have integrity, right? When you got yes. things like this going. So that makes perfect sense. So you guys are getting established now. Tell us what you, where you plan to be in, say, three to five years, your goals, your dreams, et cetera. We have some pretty ambitious plans. So by the end of 2022, uh, we expect to be at about 15 airplanes, which would be 10 passenger airplanes, five uh, cargo or, or freighter aircraft. Uh, we plan within two years to have our own headquarters and maintenance facility that we're building at Fort Lauderdale Airport. Uh, it'd be about a $30 million project to build that complex for us with offices and hangar space and simulated training bays. Uh, we then expect to also get into wide body aircraft. So we fly A320s, which are narrow body. So we're looking at acquiring A330s, uh, which in the passenger side can take as many as 260 passengers, but also on the cargo side, good complement to the A321 freighters that we will have. So within five years, we hope to be at 50 airplanes, a uh, mix of probably 35 passenger airplanes, 15 cargo aircraft. Uh, in our new uh, home and facility in Fort Lauderdale. And we expect and, and, and project to be the dominant uh, best charter airline uh, in the U.S. And those, are our, those are our ambitious goals. I think we've set a great platform and foundation here to be able to do that. We've got a great investor base. We've got a great board of directors who support us and provide a lot of expertise to us in, in many different areas. And so we've, we've got all of the elements that we need to be able to succeed over the next three to five years. Wonderful. Like you said, it is very ambitious, but it's realistic. As you said, you've based a very strong foundation, which is what you need to build a very strong company, get some good momentum going for you guys. And so the last question I want to kind of dive into here, is there anyone you could compare to any comparable airlines that are like well-known now, but you saw start as a new entrant into the airline service? Sure, there, there are a couple of very, very well-run airlines that do both scheduled and charter services. So uh, Sun Country Airlines, uh, which just went public a few months ago, very, very successful airline now. They fly a number of narrow body 737s for Amazon, which is something that we'd like to do eventually. Uh, very well-managed, well-run, uh, well-funded, uh, and they've got a great group of employees and, and team members there. So we, we look at a lot of what they do to sort of model ourselves after that. Uh, Allegiant, another well-run great airline that does charter as with primarily scheduled service, but they do uh, charter uh, operations. Uh, we look at what they do. They operate the same airplane we operate, which is the A320. Uh, and we like to be uh, very much like, like they are. Mm -hmm. uh, Spirit Airlines, uh, just up the road from us, they do some of our maintenance work. Uh, and we're working with them uh, in some other areas where they could assist us. So uh, there are a number of, air, uh, number of airlines that are so, somewhat similar to what we do. There are some other char pure charter airlines like ATSG and, and uh, iAero and World Atlantic uh, that we compete with, but we, there is enough business out there that while we compete, uh, they're very much full uh, uh, with their capacity in terms of having contracted all out all of their aircraft. And we are too. So uh, the, the charter uh, space in this country is, is underserved by airlines uh, and we expect to fill a big piece of that gap for them. Wonderful, Ed. I think you did a great job of giving the overview and the outline of the company here for everybody. But if anybody else wants to know anything else, don't be afraid to let us know and we'll happily dive into that as well. But for now, stay tuned. We'll get you some more news and information over the wire as soon as it comes in. Ed, thank you for your time. Michael, thank you. Have a great day.